The next topic will be hydro demolition and UHPC overlay preservation solutions for bridges. Uh, uh, this uh, presentation will be by Peter Seibert, of the technical, ex uh, who is the technical expert for the UHPC Solutions North America. Uh, Peter has 25 years of experience in construction materials industry, and with him, we've got uh, John McFadden, who's a project manager with UHPC Solutions. Please help me welcome John and Peter. Morning, everybody. Um, Thanks for having us. Uh, thank you to the South uh, Eastern Bridge Preservation Partnership for inviting us to speak today at this uh, exciting topic about uh, using UHPC for overlays. Um, I, so just a quick introduction. I just want to talk to everybody who we are and what we do. Um, we're not a material supplier. We are contractors. So what we do is we take ultra-high performance concrete and we install it. Uh, we place it, we mix it, and install it for various applications. UHPC Solutions is a, a company. We're based out of Orange, New Jersey, and we do work all across the U.S. Um, we offer, and we also do the hydro demolition as well. The company was formed by getting two experienced civil contractors together. Uh, one is Basilico. Um, they're out of Long Island, New York. 75 years experience. Uh, it's probably around a $650 million company. And then the other one is Wallow. It's a Swiss contractor. They have, uh, they have been around for 100 years. Um, they're kind of Switzerland. And it's a, uh, like a $950 million company. So those two companies got together about four or five years ago at one of these conferences and said, hey, there's something we can do. Um, the Swiss guys, they have a lot of experience in equipment. They've done a lot of overlays in Switzerland. And there's an exciting contractor that can come together, work together, and install UHPC. So who knows who has heard about UHPC before? All right, exciting. Who has used and worked with UHPC before? All right, a couple people. Perfect. So there's a lot of perceptions out there. What is UHPC and how it works? Um, what's pr it's very simple. It's actually what's interesting about the technology itself. You have standard materials that come together. So it's uh, you have uh, mo depending on the suppliers, you would generally always have cement, silica sand, ground quartz, and silica fume. So these are standard raw materials that are get put together in the premix. You add admixtures to it, and then water and fibers. And that's the key part. So what do you have with this type of material? It's very, very unique characteristics. You can get very high strengths. You can get 18 KSI, 22 KSI, some of the curing methods up to 35 KSI. But most of the field cast applications are around the 18 KSI range. But if you'd have that material only, it would be very brittle. To change that, you add fibers. So these fibers, they are half inch long, and they're like 0.08 inches 0 0.008 inches in diameter. And you add about 2% or 3 and a quarter percent fibers. I'll pass these around. There's also Tukos in here at the show, and they, they have fiber uh, manufacturer for UHPC. So then you take this uh, material, you have very high strength, you have also ductility because of the fibers, you have flexural strength, so you actually can design in tension, direct tension up to 1500 psi comfortably and also very high durability. So the durability is the matrix is very dense. Uh, most of the applications, you get maybe around 20 coulombs. So you have very unique characteristics. You can use it, and particularly in the US, you have seen it a lot of it in bridge applications, particularly for taking precast elements to connect it. Um, you can use it for overlays. You could also use it for in marine environments, for the piers, pier jacketing, fix it with that. It's very high abrasion resistance. Um, and then in the plastic stage, it's very unique as well. It's uh, thixotropic or self-consolidating. So most of the applications you have seen now are self-consolidating, mix up the material, fill up the forms, walk away. In an overlay, we're going to talk about it, it's thixotropic. What does that mean? It's a very stiff material. You mix it up, you place it in front of the paver, because often you have to hold up like 4%, 6% slope. And as the paver runs across it, puts vibration in it, smoothens it out, and you have a nice finished surface. So that's a quick overview for UHPC. Again, we, we use commercially available UHPCs. There's now around six different commercially available UHPCs in the US. SmartUp is here as well. They have a booth. Visit them. You can learn a lot about the material. 
Um, so overlays. So in the U.S., it kind of started up uh, back in uh, 2006 was the first applications in the U.S. Now we have over 35 different DOTs, half used UHPCs in any type of different forms. Um, but the overlays really took off in 2016. That was the very first overlay that was installed in the, in the United States. Um, then it was now in 17. Um, the, the one in 16 was in Delaware, 17 uh, uh, was in Delaware as well. And then in Iowa was 2018, we installed that one. And then uh, 19, there was uh, New York had three structures and then we did another one in Delaware. But 2020 was a big year for UHPC overlays. Um, there was a lot of structures were done, 10 different bridges were done in six different states. Um, you had Delaware, New Jersey, New York, Iowa, Rhode Island, and Illinois. Um, and from there, it was kind of like a reset for the industry. Um, 22, this year is very exciting. You see bundled projects, uh, New York State, for example, bundled six or seven bridges together. Um, I think Missouri has a self non-proprietary overlay happening, and also you're going to see the largest uh, UHPC overlay in the United States or in the world. It's going to be kicking off Monday. We'll talk about that later. So UHPC overlays, um, how, how, what, what type of overlays are out there? Um, most of them are right now being used for waterproofing because, again, it's uh, no, no water can penetrate in there. Um, so generally speaking, if you remove an inch and a quarter, inch and a half to two inches and put the UHPC on top. Um, you can also do structural stiffening depending on your structure, what you have going on. Um, this is very popular in Europe. They add another layer of rebars in the top mats and you can actually increase the structural capacity of your deck. And then it's finished. The Europeans, they like to put asphalt on it. Don't know why, but for us here in North America, we either really like to grind it or grind and groove. You have a very nice, smooth surface. Um, it's a smooth ride and you really take advantage of the durability of UHPC. How do you get a successful UHPC? And as really, these six different things are very essential and important to have a successful UH uh, overlay. Uh, it's your surface prep, efficient mixing, material supply, cons proper consolidation, the curing, and then obviously at the end they have a finished nice riding surface. And I'm just gonna talk about each point a little bit more detail so you can see how the technology works. The hydro dam is absolutely critical, and we've seen this for other uh, rigid overlays and this conference as well. Um, generally speaking, we've done some overlays that was just two inches were right removed with uh, hydro demo, but now other ones is mechanical milling first for an inch, and then do the other inch using hydro demo. We feel it's very important. You're installing a material that's going to last for 75 years. The surface prep, do it right, have it installed right, do it properly, get proper bonding, and Hydro Demo really gives you that type of uh, finish. And if you look at Europe, they've done this uh, over 100 structures for the last 10 years. It's the same thing there. It's always with Hydro Demo, and we have excellent bonding. And then uh, do sa saturated surface dry. That's very critical before you install the UHPC overlay. Then there's different ways how to mix it. Um, we, as, as contractors, we prefer to mix it on site. Um, it kind of started with two high shear mixes, you can see here in the top left. And then uh, now what we have done is we have made a whole trailer that comes in, rolls into your job site. We can set up, we put the pre-mixed pre -mixed materials on top of the mixers, add all the liquids, fibers to it, mix it all up, and then go from there. For this type of plant, we can do like 45 to 60 cubic yards in a day very comfortably. For other larger projects, um, you can also do a, an on-site plant. This is for a project in Switzerland. Uh, they've done, they did 2,000 yards for this project, and at that plant they did 130, 150 cubic yards a day comfortably, mixing the materials on-site, bring it over to the in front of the paver, and place it. It's a fully automized plant. Then what's very important uh, is the material supply. You want to have a consistent material supply. When your paver is running, you don't want to have stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. You want to have a nice, steady, eddy paste, go along, place the material. Um, and as you can see here, what we do is uh, we, we put it in buggies, uh, we bring it in front of the, the paver, place the material, and then the paver runs atop it, smoothing it out. Consolidation. There's conventionally available uh, air screeds. We use them, we have used them, but they're limited. Um, they're very good for very small projects. Um, you have sometimes a single lane, you can place it there. 
But what's limited on that is the vibration is not uniform. It's very uncontrolled. Um, they're not heavy enough because you can see the material is very gooey, more or less, and you try to place in front of it, you might not be able to have enough power to smoothen it out. And often what you can see is contractors. This one is set up right. You have it on rails. You see often contractors that put the, the air screen right onto the piece of wood, ride it along. We call it riding the forms. So really putting all the vibration into the form, not into the material. So just to, we want to caution people to be aware of that, to do it properly. We, we like to prefer a, a thin lift paver. It's a UHPC paver that's specifically designed for ultra high performance concrete. This machine here, you can set it up for eight foot width up to 30 feet. So you can nice and comfortably do two lanes at a time. Um, can, you can regulate the frequency. You can put a crown in it. We can slope it. Um, it can ride on tracks. Um, you have very excellent consolidation. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's a very nice machine to use for UHPC overlays. Then the curing. Curing is very important. Um, for UHPCs, you don't use burlaps. You just put curing compound on it. For most of the application, then put a piece of plastic on top of it so now water can evaporate. There's no dehydration protected. But right now, we're actually working on just using curing compound as well, making this process much easier, much smoother, and have a better look. And then the finished surface. Just use standard grinding and grooving. Um, you want to do that about after two days when you have 11 KSI, you have enough strength in the material, um, and then do grinding and grooving, and as you can see here in the pictures, you get a very nice, smooth finish. So these are kind of like the, the important pa aspects where you need to do in a UHPC overlay. I'm going to bring John over. He's our project manager with all the field experience, and he's going to talk about some bread and butter bridges and also some signature, signature bridges where it's been used in, in the U.S. So as Peter was discussing and showing you some of the equipment, um, we can batch on site in remote locations, whether it's up in the mountains or out by the shore. A um, couple of these projects here, we, we batched all this material right on site. New Jersey DOT did an overlay, a um, couple of bundled bridges on that one too. Uh, there was three, the, the prominent one was I-280. We had about 30,000 ADT on that bridge, um, stage construction, two halves, and about 150 yards were placed on that, on that bridge. Um, this one did have the Swiss model of uh, asphalt overlay uh, after the UHPC placement. IA-163 out in uh, Jasper County, Iowa. This was another two-stage bridge. Um, the first half was closed down. Hydro demolition was done for about an inch removal. Uh, and then UHPC was placed at two inches thick to raise the grade actually by an inch, increase the structural capacity. Uh, a lot of freeze thaw cycles out there on that bridge. And um, I think that that's performing very well out there. You can see that top left picture. Again, a uh, very remote location. And uh, everything was batched on site with no issues. Bruckner Expressway in Bronx, New York. This is actually a, uh, an off-ramp from the Major, De Major Deegan Expressway onto the Bruckner Expressway. So if anybody knows that area, uh, very high volume of traffic, heavy trucks, lots of cars. Um, this was uh, part of an ongoing project where the contractor did a milling operation over this bridge and exposed a large void underneath. They didn't really know how to, uh, how to address it with um, uh, any other asphalt overlays or, or concrete overlays. They knew about UHPC and UHPC solutions. They reached out. Uh, we were able to work through the solution with them to place uh, an overlay. We, we mobilized very quickly, uh, batched right there on site, and, and uh, we're able to get them to get that ramp back opened up very quickly. Commodore Barry Bridge, uh, this was back in 2020. Um, there was uh, kind of a pilot project there on the, on the main span bridge and then also on uh, the Route 130 bridge just a little further on the approach. Uh, about 23,000 uh, square feet was performed, 243 cubic yards, all batched on site. They did a deeper, a deeper hydro demolition there exposing rebar. You can see in that center picture. We used our thin lift paver. Delaware Memorial Bridge. This is a picture of the main span uh, back in 2020. The 
DRBA did a pilot project where they were kind of investigating how this process would go if they wanted to do the entire main span northbound. Uh, so they did three different sections. They have a girder span, a truss span, and a suspended span uh, design. They did a section in each piece of the bridge. And um, they have heavy traffic, 80,000 uh, 80, daily. Uh, so back on the pilot project, they did a four-inch removal and replacement, got down into the, the uh, it's a truss reinforcement system. They got down into the rebar, um, created some delays because of all the uh, exposing of rebar that they were attempting to do back then. Um, so there were some lessons learned during that pilot project, but they did like the overlay. Um, you see some pictures of it here. Uh, worked out very well for them. You could actually feel from one half of the bridge to the other how much it stiffened up after we did the overlay and it cured. The DRBA liked it so much that they have put out a full project now, northbound, the northbound bridge. Um, UHPC Solutions is the prime contractor. Um, so it'll be three phases. We actually start Monday. Uh, as part of those lessons learned, we've now gone to a two-inch thick deck. They're going to stay above the rebar. Um, it'll be a one-inch mill and then a one-inch hydro demolition for two-inch removal, two-inch replacement with UHPC. There's some uh, uh, joint elimination that they're doing along with it, so it'll be a very smooth ride when they're done stiffen up their deck and give them the service life that they're looking for. The Beast at Rutgers University, this was a, uh, I guess we'd call it a research project. Um, I don't know who's familiar with the Beast. I wasn't before I heard about this project, but it, it is a um, facility within Rutgers University where they have a truck axle that goes across this mock uh, bridge deck. And the axles I forget the exact number of times that they go back and forth this bridge deck, but they freeze through the bridge deck and they run the axles back and forth a number of times and they accelerate the wear and tear, um, like 10 years of, of wear and tear within one year of, uh, of actual time, maybe even less. Uh, so this project actually, they, they took off the, the existing bridge deck, <coughs> we used hydro demolition, and then placed one half of it with an LMC overlay and one half with the UHPC overlay. And now they're going to run the truck axle back and forth and you'll get to see some, some real life comparison um, side by side. So some lessons learned. Um, hydro demolition obviously is uh, kind of in, in uh, discriminatory. So you wind up with some uh, overruns and um, you have to have enough material out on site to handle those overruns. Some of your raw materials, how you work the logistics, where you source it from, how you bring it in, but it can all be done remotely or any remote site, anywhere anywhere uh, that basically you can fit the footprint of the equipment. Some of the pay item and, and, and measurements and how we work the specifications to uh, kind of take the risk off of the contractor and help uh, make it more comfortable for the owner so we can limit the, the, the price that goes along with risk to an owner. Lots of backup plans for equipment uh, breakdowns or, uh, you know, rain events or anything like that. Um, could be trouble if you're trying to do an overlay with uh, an inexperienced uh, material supplier or contractor. Uh, could lead you to a, uh, an experience where you think UHPC can't be used that way, but um, Hopefully, uh, we've shown you here that it can be used very successfully. And uh, for some of the agencies that are here, uh, we're always open to discussing specifications uh, with you, constructability, uh, any of the things that we've learned, and just try to help to be able to use UHPC more and more throughout the industry. I'll pass it back to Peter here for a couple of closing comments. All right. Thanks, John. Just very quickly, um, yeah, so preservation of UHPC, it works quite well. You can, depending on the applications, what you do, um, it works well for accelerated bridge construction. So you can take precast deck panels, put it on there. Like for example, if you take a number five bar and stick in UHPC for three inches, you pull on it, you break the bar every time. So you can design very well connections. It's impermeable, corrosion resistant. It's not an eggshell that's sitting on top, it's an overlay that can break like the, the fibers, it really helps you have flexural resistance. And it can be a very sustainable environmental solution because if you have 75 years life coming out of the material, um, stall it, 
walk away and don't have to think about it for, for a long time. You guys got any questions? We still got our booth going on. Pop by in the, in the break. Happy to talk about it. Um, thanks for the extra time. Sorry I'm a little over, but uh, happy to answer any questions about the material, application, installation, how to work with it, uh, and you always get a contract's perspective. Enough. Thanks, Stephen. The preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.